Very interesting interview with Moses Atalma on boxing scene. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. It is a written interview, not a video interview. So those of you who are pushed for time or just lazy, perhaps won't want to check it out. But I recommend it because he talks about his life as an amateur and his reasons for turning pro at the age of 18 rather than trying to go to the Olympics and what have you. And he was easily good enough to have qualified for the Olympics that happened this year, and in my estimation, surely would have done much better than Delicious Ori, for example. In any event, he talks about the struggles he had to go through during his amateur career, not in a sob story kind of way, but in a matter of fact type of way. He actually kind of laughs at uh, a lot of the stuff he went through. He talks about how fast his rise has been in the pros in terms of his profile, and how grateful he is for where he's at. He then throws some names out there, a short list of potential opponents who he'd like to fight by the end of the year. The likes of Solomon Dakers, who's the current English heavyweight champion, Alexander Zarkozy, who's the current European champion, Fabio Wardley, who interestingly enough is a stable mate of Moses Atalma. They're both trained by Ben Davison and Joe Joyce. Joyce is also a promotional stablemate. Now him mentioning Fabio Wardley is particularly interesting to me because normally when two fighters are trained by the same coach, they won't be calling each other out. But with Moses Atama, he's thinking to hell with all that. If I have to get a different coach to fight Fabio Wardley, let's do it, I don't care. To me, that shows a certain level of confidence. So I like the fact he was willing to call out Fabio Wardley, a guy who trains in the same gym under Ben Davison. Now the most sensible fight out of the names mentioned to take next would probably be Solomon Dakers, but styles make fights. I personally would pick Itauma to beat any of these guys except for Zarkozy simply because I don't know enough about Zarkozy to say whether or not I think Itauma could beat him. Zarkozy is an unbeaten, extremely tall, I think he's 6'9", heavyweight. But the other three I'm very familiar with, Dakers, Wardley, and Joyce. Now, some people might think Joyce is a step too far for Itauma at this stage of his career. But if Itauma really wants to try and do the unlikely, which is to break Mike Tyson's record and become the youngest heavyweight, heavyweight champion in history, then he's going to have to fight someone like a Joel Joyce before the end of the year in order to get ranked high enough to get a title shot. The deadline, so to speak, for breaking Mike Tyson's record is May 2025. So there ain't much time, less than a year to get it done. It will certainly be contingent on fragmented belts and what have you. I think Joe Joyce is a winnable fight for Moses Atalma. People, of course, will express concern over the fact that Atalma's never been 10 rounds, never mind 12. But he has sparred Joe Joyce. And I have to imagine he took a lot of confidence from that sparring. And Atalma has also sparred, of course, Tyson Fury, Daniel Dubois, Lawrence Akoli, Anthony Joshua, so on and so forth. He's a Southpaw, and we all saw the difficulties that Joe Joyce had against Southpaw Jelly Zhang. Zhang's a much bigger man than Moses Atalma, of course. Probably hits a lot harder. With that being said, Atalma's much faster than Zhang, throws a lot more punches, he's a lot more mobile, and he certainly wouldn't have any trouble whatsoever landing on Joe Joyce. If that fight got made, I would pick Atalma to thrash Joyce. Yeah, I think it would be a thrashing. If he didn't manage to get Joyce out of there, he'd certainly win, again in my estimation, comfortably on the scorecards. They're both with Frank Warren. There's no clash there in terms of TV network or promoter. The problem, however, which Atama alluded to in the interview, is that there's no real incentive for any of the names that he's calling out right now to fight him. He doesn't yet bring enough to the table commercially to entice them to take such a big risk unless Frank Warren is willing to take a financial hit. And Atama himself, if they manage to get Joe Joyce to fight Atama next before the end of the year, they'd have to pay Joyce a lot of money, well into six figures, and Atama would take a much smaller purse. It might be a 80-20 type situation. That's probably what it would take to secure Joe Joyce as an opponent. Is Frank Warren willing to put up six figures and probably lose a load on the show? And is Atama willing to take, let's say, 20% just to get the opportunity to take Joe Joyce's scalp and move up in the rankings, position himself for a title shot potentially? Somebody in my element group suggested that Jermaine Franklin would be a good opponent for Moses Atama next. I'm not saying Franklin would be a bad opponent. I think Atama could learn a lot from fighting someone like a Jermaine Franklin. But again, if his goal is to try and break Mike Tyson's record, I don't think Franklin is the right opponent. I think stylistically, Itauma stands a much better chance of looking good and even looking spectacular against Joe Joyce 
than he does against Jermaine Franklin. I think Jermaine Franklin's one of these guys who's really hard to look good against because of how awkward and durable he is. Joyce, of course, is durable, but he's a lot easier to hit. He's a lot slower than Jermaine Franklin. So those are my thoughts on Atama's interview with Boxing Scene. Make sure you check it out. But also his call out of Solomon Dakers, Zarkozy, the European champion, Fabio Wardley, his stable mate, and Joe Joyce. If it were up to me, ideal scenario, I'd match him with Joyce next. But if we're to temper our expectations a bit, you'd think Sol Dakers is more likely, although I suspect Dakers probably isn't very keen on the fight. I mean, I saw Fraser Clark on Simon Jordan's podcast recently, and the way Fraser Clark was talking about Moses Atalma, it's as if he was looking up to him. So I can't imagine that fight's going to happen anytime soon either. So Warren's going to need to take a hit on a show, stump up the money, and I think it'll be worth it. In my estimation, a Tamar is that kind of talent that you can make investments in. That's what it will be, an investment. That's my take on it. Link to the interview in the description box below. Check it out. Let me know what you think.